Welcome to The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. I am your host, Cicely Davis. Whether it's high school, college, or the NFL, from September to February, every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday night, Saturday for college respectfully, football fans eagerly look forward to the start of a new season filled with exciting games and matchups between their favorite teams. And on these days and nights, whether it's in an arena, a local bar, or a living room or man cave, Americans are gathered together, mostly men, But yes, also women and children to cheer on their division favorite for a chance at that end of season Eden, the Super Bowl. Lions and Jaguars and Bears, oh my, it's football season, folks. Help me to pay homage on The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. Welcome back to an exciting episode. I'm Cicely of The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave a positive review. And this time I'm and I'm going to ask that you leave your favorite team in the comments as well as we hurriedly get into this week's episode, A Savage Ode to Football. American football, that is. And I'm excited to get away from my girliness and flex my sports knowledge this week. It's going to be really exciting. When it comes to sports, to be honest with you folks, I am a savage beast. I am not your average female when it comes to sports. So, um, you know, this is football season and it typically starts the Monday after Labor Day, as you all know, with a preseason, but we're going to get into all that. But as you know, it's football season, just got through Sunday, watched Monday night football, really looking forward to Thursday night. This has been a recent addition in the past few years. As I grew up, there was no Thursday night football, only Sunday and Monday nights. But hey, the more football, the better, right? But um, really excited about football season and just wanted to take a little bit of a political break um, and kind of talk about culture. Remember, this this whole podcast is about conversation. It's about American culture. It's about what us as Americans really love, what we have in common. We're going to love the things that we really love, and we're going to join together and hate the things that we really, really hate, and just really work hard to get our American society back and the spirit of America. And when I think about the epitome of the spirit of America, football, American football comes into mind. So, you know, the football season, as it is upon us, as you heard in the intro, um, is just a really exciting time. Now, football is not only my favorite sport, it's also my favorite sport to watch for so many reasons. And I'm going to get into that in the in, uh, in the further on in this episode. But Just to give everybody a little background knowledge, maybe you're not a football fan. Maybe you're a woman who doesn't actually watch football and don't really understand why it's so exciting. But maybe hearing from a female, a female's perspective will maybe make you tune into it and uh, join and look at it, watch a game or attend a game or so. So football is three games in the preseason. Okay, you got three games in the preseason. You have 17 games in the regular season with three rounds across three weeks in the postseason. And it's capped off by the Super Bowl. So the postseason is three, three weeks. It's three rounds across three weeks, and it's capped off by the Super Bowl. Now, let's talk a little bit about numbers. Let's talk numbers of football. It's four chances to gain 10 yards. OK, so you're talking about downs. We're talking about four chances to gain 10 yards, which it's four quarters with 15 minutes apiece on a field that's 91.44 meters. That's 100 yards, folks. That is the measurement between the goal lines with two end zones at 10 yards apiece, making that 120 yards total. The length of that long green and white fantastic rectangle being 120 yards um, end to end and 160 feet wide. So there are 32 teams in the league. Now the league, of course, respectfully being the NFL, we have 53 players on the team 
only 22 players at a time on the field, 11 on offense, 11 on defense, no more than 22 players on the field at once with a minimum of seven. So you cannot have play if there's less than seven players and you cannot have play if there's more than 22 players on the field at one time. And then, of course, you have the players, the positions. You have quarterbacks, the offensive linemen. You have the running back, the fullback, the tight end, the wide receivers. And people forget about the holder and the center. The holder, the guy who literally holds the ball for the kicker (laughs) and the center, the guy who passes the ball to the quarterback so that he can pass that ball. All play a vital role in the team with specific duties and roles to get that pigskin in the end zone for the six points and one additional point for that goal kick off of a touchdown or a settlement of three points off that kick if that touchdown is not attainable. Hopefully I'm not losing you. Um, And then for those of you who are aware of football, this is actually exciting you because I literally have goosebumps while I'm talking about football right now, truly. And you have fumbles and you have tackles and you have touchdowns and you have blitz and you have interceptions. They all contribute to what is by far my favorite sport, again, to watch and to attend. Now, whether you're a Ram or a Panther or a Lion, a Bengal or a Jaguar, a Falcon or an Eagle or a Raven, a Cowboy or a Chief, a Titan, a Viking, a Steeler, a Saint or a Giant, you have to admit this game is exciting. It's fun and it's engaging and it's addictive because it's physical and it's strategic and it's complex and it's smart. And it's a time when Americans are joined together for three to three and a half hours or so, loving, yes, loving their favorite team, loving their favorite player, even loving their favorite owners. But through all that love of the sport, they're loving the country that brought it to them. This, to me, is what is exciting about football. This is why I very specifically and personally, love football. So a little bit about me. Um, I know that I've said this in previous um, episodes, if you haven't listened, I am a very, very competitive person. I hate to lose. I am a, I'm a sore loser. I'm a bad loser. I am not a gracious loser at all. I absolutely hate to lose. I am athletic. I was a tomboy as a kid. Um, I was a tomboy, true and true. Um, I hated wearing skirts and I would rip and run literally all day. I'm from inner city, Rochester, New York. I was an inner city kid and I did things with my friends outside. I played ding dong ditch. Okay. For those of you from the inner city who are hearing this, you know what ding dong ditch is. For those of you who are country or rural, let me explain it to you because you might've had your own country version. Ding dong ditch is really simple, okay, because kids make up this stuff and it's just never complicated when kids make up games, but they're always the most fun. You literally go up to a door and you ring the bell and you literally will, you most likely will choose that grumpy or cranky or mean or scary person in the neighborhood. And then you wait for them to get close to the door, if not answer the door, and then you run. (laughs) And that's it. (laughs) <laughs> and I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun or complicated, but again, kids make it up, but you do it in several times in a row, right? So we had cranky Mr. Parker across the street and we always chose him and he started figuring out who we were. So he would yell our names or he'd come across the street and, and yell at us or yell at our parents about it. But we played ding dong ditch. I played kickball and dodgeball. I played with any game with the stick, invented a game with the stick. I jumped double dutch. Now, for those of you who don't know what double dutch is, it's jumping two ropes at a time. It's called double dutch. And I actually um, was on a team that won um, a city trophy for double dutch. So I ran track in elementary and summer camp and in junior high and a little bit in the beginning of high school, but I dropped it. I tried volleyball. I tried basketball, but 
I actually stopped growing. My growing spurt was stopped short and I lost interest and I actually started turning girly and became a cheerleader. So, but I was always, always physical. And I also played football in the streets and in the parks with boys and the boys were rough. Okay. They tackled, they clotheslined, and they tripped us. I skinned up my knees and my elbows and I learned to be tough and competitive and I learned how to take hits. This is how I learned the game of football. Sometimes the parents would join in. Always the bigger brothers or bigger sisters would join in, but sometimes the entire neighborhood would join in. We'd have this massive football game with kids and parents playing at the park, but the parents and the kids and again, the boys, they took no mercy on the smaller kids. So, you know, there were no pads, there was no equipment, there was no mouth guards. It was just you on your own, your own athleticism and your own tenacity. So if you decided that you were big enough and brawn enough to get in the game, then you were big enough and brawn enough to take a hit. Whether you were four, five, six, or 14, 15, or 16, or 24, 25, or 26. I mean, those are just hard knocks. That's how I learned the rules of the game. Parents had football parties, my parents, through football parties as a kid. And I understood the rules and the calls and the reasons for the penalties and the strategy because I had played football as a kid in the streets. And then, of course, watching it every Sunday and Monday night with my parents. And as an adult, it was all about the game and the teams and the people I watched the game with, my family and my friends and strangers alike. Loving the game, the team, and the sport, and America, right? So it's tailgating up at 3 and 4 a.m., finding an awesome place to park, bringing food, bringing drinks, blasting music, camaraderie with other fans in the streets, that party before the big party, which is the game. It was literally about the party eventually moving on to the game and cheering on that favorite team. And of course, here in Minneapolis, it's the Minnesota Vikings, even though, you know, it's been a real tough road. Now, if you understand the record of the Minnesota Vikings, you can understand my challenges. Nonetheless, I am a football fan, true and true. Savage truth is the whole of America is okay with itself and its traditions. Have you ever watched a season of Hard Knocks? Anybody? Have you ever watched a season of Hard Knocks? So Hard Knocks is a reality sports documentary TV series produced by the NFL Films and HBO. It was first broadcasted in 2001. And the show typically follows an NFL team through its training camp and covers the team's preparation for upcoming football season. And it depicts the personal and professional lives of players and the coaches and staff, including their family life and their positions and the battles and even insight jokes and pranks and the team clicks. And it particularly focuses on rookies and their adjustments to playing in the NFL, usually with emphasis on the team's most recent top draft pick. And It will also focus if you tune into it, and I highly recommend that you do watch Hard Knocks. It also focuses on um, undrafted journeyman players who are attempting to make the team. So remember when I talked about how there's 53 players? Well, a team will typically have about 90 players, and then they go through a process of elimination, particularly during camp and during that preseason to decide who that final roster 53 is team members are. So the NFL and HBO have called Hard Knocks the first sports-based reality series in television history. So this is just a fantastic show to watch because it really gets you to understand the game and who the players are because you only get um, a different perspective of who they are when you're watching on Sunday, Monday, and Thursday nights, but who they are personally, their quirks, Um, their personalities, their camaraderie, you know, what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, whether they're funny or serious, what makes them tick, what their family life is like, their background, where they came from, how long they've played, you know, um, what makes them special, what makes them the standout, if they were traded and why, and their journey and on and on and on. It's covered in the show called Hard Knocks. Now, what you will gain if you watch this Hard Knock show is what you learn in watching any NFL game in spite of the lame, woke message that is still written um, 
in the end zone of every NFL team and racism. Now, this is something that has started in 2020 where the NFL has declared that um, it's going to have etched in every end zone of every team and racism. It's their their take or their attempt at social justice. Now, to be honest with you, I actually took a break from the NFL from watching it for a year because I was boycotting this whole social justice thing and this take because I personally felt that the left and this whole woke agenda was taking over something that had remained perfectly neutral. See, sports was one way in which whether you were red or blue, conservative or Republican or how you voted, it didn't matter. Sports just brought all people together. And when the NFL decided to go woke and the NBA even worse so, I actually took a break from watching. But I'm back because I just simply can't stay away from football. And they have actually eased up a bit. And I have to bring you current events and part of American culture and society and the strength of society, especially here in America, of course, is football. But what you do learn when you watch football, when you watch Hard Knocks and you watch any NFL game, you learn that the media during that game actually forgets to be woke for those three to three and a half hours because of the images, the players and the staff and the fans of both sexes all colors and creeds and religions and ages together, loving a sport and the country that gave it to them. The savage truth is there is no racism. There's no racism. You simply don't see it. If you watch Hard Knocks, you recognize there's no racism. When you watch the NFL, you watch a game on any particular game on any Sunday or Monday or Thursday night, you just see people coming together, guys on the field and physicality and complexity and strategy, trying to get that pen, that pigskin into the end zone as much as possible. They could care less about skin color. And so the woke media actually forgets about this for three and a half years. And that's what makes it so enjoyable. It's just all about physicality and strategy. It's about tailgating and Cinderella stories. It's about rivalries and Brutes and brawn and boasts and brags. It's end zone celebrations, defensive excitement, and Thanksgiving traditions and weekly intrigue. And if you really want to see what America is like and what it's capable of, go to a football game. You will see Americans all salute and stand for the national anthem, most of them singing. You'll see high fives and hugs. Cheers, jeers, and beers, black and white, young and old, male and female, all together, raising their hands and their voices in camaraderie and enjoying their freedom, relishing in their freedom to enjoy America's favorite pastime. If you're not a football fan or a watcher, try it this year. I invite you, I encourage you, try football this year. Get tickets and go to a game, even if it's in the nosebleeds. See if that American feeling doesn't capture you and warm you all over. High five a stranger when your team scores and see what America really, really feels like. That's the emotion and the feeling and the beauty of the American spirit. And it comes around every year in spite of what's going on in Washington, D.C. Football and America. Ah, what a feeling. Football. No sport can compete. In America, no nation can beat. Please like, subscribe, share, and leave a positive review. And this week, leave your favorite team as well. And remember... Be bold, be brave, be an American football fan, be true. Until next time, folks, I'm Cicely of The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. 
The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis is a production of Front Page Magazine and the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Reproduction of this podcast without express written consent is prohibited.